Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Egg Talks with CPA Ontario. Today we'll be exploring why a CPA designation can help you become more in demand by employers as a young professional and help you launch your career. My name is Mary Barrell and I'm president of Talent Egg. Joining me from CPA Ontario is Gloria Annabel, who's a recruiter, public speaker and career coach. Glow inspires students to consider careers in accounting and finance and advises them on how to navigate the process. She connects aspiring CPAs to some of Canada's top professionals and employers. We also have Sean Mullen with us, who's a recruiter, public speaker, and certified teacher. Sean helps business students learn about the CPA designation and coaches them on skills needed to gain a competitive edge in the recruitment process. Sean enjoys helping students make a lasting impression on employers. It's wonderful to have you both here today. Thank you for joining us, Glow and Sean. Great Thanks to be so here, Mary. Thank you. Us. We asked our community of students and grads to submit any questions they have for our guests. Thanks to all of you who sent in your questions. We'll try to get to as many as we can today. But before we begin, Glow and Sean, can you give us a little background on CPA Ontario? Sean, maybe you want to start us on this? Sure. Thanks, Mary. So CPI Ontario is a designation. It's one of Canada's leading business designations. And we uh, have several different functions. Obviously, we have a membership and a member base to which we are always including uh, the profession is driving the demand for the profession forward. So this could be through thought leadership, professional development, associations, really trying to make sure CPAs are always at the front uh, leading edge of decision making and of value within their own businesses. But also, we have this student portion where they're training up for their business designation and then where Glow and I fit in, you know, we work with students who are kind of considering what the designation is all about. There's a lot of misperceptions and stereotypes out there of what accountants and finance professionals do. And, you know, we were really happy job of really showcasing the diversity of the profession and all the different skill sets you have and what that means for your future. We have over 94,000 members and over 22,000 students going through the program currently. So that just goes to show the demand is so high for CPAs in Canada, and it's actually the leading accounting designation in Canada. And we're really proud at CPA Ontario to be able to support the members and support the students in achieving their career goals. Uh, I want to get to the questions right now and just dive in. The first question comes to us from Mofaluke, who is a CPA enrollee. And this person says they're in need of employment while taking courses. Could you clarify what courses could enhance this person's chance of employment in the field of taxation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if he's currently a CPA student and his passion is taxation, then the obvious course that I would recommend is the taxation course. As well, the audit course will really help you be successful in the area of taxation. You have to really be comfortable with your numbers, making sure you have those technical skills to be able to help your future clients whenever you find that role that you're looking for. We really want to give CPA students the, um, the diversity of choice in terms of where they end up in the world of business and in the world of finance. In addition to what Glow said, what's great about our education program, our post, uh, postgraduate professional education program, is it's really meant to be two things simultaneously. You know, taking some courses, you know, in the evening, self-study, getting that theory and those technical aspects together, and then applying it practically during the day. I mean, the research is overwhelming that when you learn in a practical way, hands-on mm -hmm. way, the learning really gets internalized. So we've included that in our training program, which is why that practical experience is so important. And so there is that breadth. There is that diversity of skill set that you will learn. So tax won't be the only course, but we do allow you, encourage you to take a deep dive in an area you want to heavily specialize in. Let the employers know you're a CPA mm. student. The demand is so high for CPA students right now. There are a number of organizations, many of organizations who will actually pay for you to go through the professional education program. So that's actually one thing you can have in your back pocket that's going to help you land that role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like an outstanding uh, piece of advice. I understand also, you've talked a little bit about it before, uh, that you have a post-secondary ambassador program that's designed to help students in grad as well. Could you tell us a, a little bit about how that works? Maybe Sean, you could start us off on that. Sure. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, we're absolutely thrilled about this program. So, you know, one of the things that we're always trying to do is really showcase all the different careers that are out there. And I think when we talk about the 
when you picture a CPA in your mind, most people who are unfamiliar, they kind of picture that person who works in audit insurance or tax or maybe works for a firm or the big four. And certainly a lot of CPAs do that. And that's a great career if that's a pathway they choose. But what's fascinating is of all the CPAs that work in all of public practice, that's actually only 17%. So where's the other 83? And how do we know if that's somewhere we want to work? Getting into the professional education program is pretty simple in the sense that there are courses you take and mark thresholds you achieve, but everyone's in who achieves those. There's enough room. But the job is always up to them. We can't give you the job. However, we want to do the next best thing. So the first priority of this ambassador program is to try to help students to meet the other 83%. We know they're going to be touching the, those 17 in public practice and hearing those great stories, but perhaps there's a connection that you want to make with someone who's in forensic accounting and law enforcement. You didn't realize that was a pathway for you. Only through that connection and that networking can you see yourself in her shoes and go, I want to be that. How do I get there? What are the skills? Who do I talk to? You know, similarly, you know, I didn't realize that CPAs are fund accountants. Well, you know, I thought finance was over here and accounts over here. I didn't realize there was such an overlap. Well, tell me more about how I get into that. So we really want to inspire. That's the first pillar of this program. Inspire you to meet as many CPAs. That employers value certain skills. They really value, yes, a base amount of technical skills, Excel, Power BI, great. But employers are telling us over and over and over again, the need for communication, critical thinking, problem solving skills. They tell us that, you know, it's much easier to teach someone, you know, financial reporting standards or the tax act, but it's hard to teach you how to communicate and be a good fit on a team. So we want to give people the chance to develop some of those skills through some of our, you know, uh, brand coach, our personal brand coaching, our networking skills coaching, you know, our time management coaching, um, all of those important things, building a great LinkedIn profile really helps students to give them that competitive edge. And then of course, we want them to be able to meet with employers. Members of this ambassador program carry with them a strong brand because the type of person that would sign up for this is someone who's already self-selecting as, you know, quote unquote, leaning in. There's someone that understands the importance of developing these skills. They understand the importance of stepping out of their comfort zone. So we want to give them a chance to do that. And employers are very hungry to meet these PSAP members because they know they're getting emerging leaders. They know they're getting the right type of student. Well, we have another question that came in from Jennifer who asks, what should I include in my resume to stand out? Who would like to take a stab at this one? Chloe, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, basically, building exactly on what Sean has said about programs like the post-secondary ambassador program we have with CP Ontario, being involved in clubs on campus, because you really want to take the opportunity to show some life skills, to show some human skills, and to also show that you have certain skills that will make you more employable. We hear from employers that, in fact, what they need to see beyond, of course, the technical skills that a degree or a diploma shows or a designation like CPA is also these things that tell the story of the human being, the person that could become part of their team. Is that how you see it, Sean? Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up, Mary, because what I encourage students to do is you really want to show them that you're the right fit for that organization. You're the right fit for the team. And, you know, I've had partners say to me, you know, that what I'm looking for when I'm hiring someone is, can I put them in front of a client and can I sit next to them on an airplane for eight hours? And what they're really saying there is it's far more important than the technical skill set you have, that you're going to be the right fit for us, that you're someone that's going to think outside the box and think creatively. Uh, something that's really easy that you can do, and this service is available across most campuses that I know of, take advantage of your career center. Mm -hmm. They are there to help you in terms of going over your resume. And this is something we also offer as part of the post-secondary ambassador program. We are partnering mm -hmm. with a company called Three Skills, as an example, just to help our PSAP members know what it is that their resume should look like, know what to put on their resume. And if they're really huge holes, then the PSAP program also helps them figure out how can we fit, uh, fill in some of these holes and make sure mm -hmm. that that resume is going to pass the gatekeeper. Well, all of that is fantastic advice, and, and it's a very common question that we get here at Talent Egg. So thank you so much for that wonderful explanation. Now, we've talked a little bit about the variety of different kind of roles uh, and opportunities that one can, one can have with a CPA designation. But mm -hmm. let's, let's dive into it. Can you give our audience an idea of the kind of opportunities that having a CPA designation can really offer young professionals as they're about to launch their career? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that I really enjoy most when I talk to CPAs or even CPAs who in the last year of their professional education program who, you know, 
for the, for the vast majority who've gone through the program, maybe 24, 25 report to me, I cannot believe how seriously I was taken at such a young age. I could not believe the level of responsibility, the meetings, the exposure to the C-suite executives, the exposure to the executives and our clients that I was getting so early because they know with those letters behind my name, that CPA letters, that I bring a specific skill set. And it's not just that technical skill set, but it's really those really important enabling skills. That type of problem solving is really what separates the CPA. Every single organization, every company, every organization in the world has CPAs or someone with that skill set working at it, unless they're just a really small organization, then they, then they have a part-time person that does it. The CPAs bring the fluency in the language, the language of business. And what is the language of business? It's numbers, it's data, it's the ability to interpret that and make good decisions. So, you know, one of the, the top skills that I've, that I've heard articulated that CPAs bring is decision-making. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's a huge misconception out there that we sometimes come across when we're speaking with students that with a, they think that with a CPA uh, designation that they can only go into traditional mm -hmm. accounting roles. And that's really not the case at all. Sean said earlier that uh, we find just about 17% of CPAs in those traditional accounting roles, you know, the big firms that most students would have heard about. But then the other 83% are doing things in various industries and in various sectors. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge huge, huge amount of choice out there in terms of where uh, you could end up with your CPA designation. Given everything that you said so far, I know that you have a very strong opinion uh, of this next question that I'm bringing to you. Uh, and that's about because of the increased use of technology and AI in business, some students have reflected that they worry that accounting may become obsolete. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that you can help us demystify this concern. Uh, Glo, maybe we can start with you on this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, that is a fair question that we get a lot from students. And we really all have to adjust. AI is going to touch every aspect of our lives. I mean, just look at the internet of things as an example, right? Being able to have these smart fridges or smart TVs, all of that, it's really going to affect our lives. So when it comes to AI, the concern that students have is that, you know what, AI is going to be able to take over all this number crunching. But remember what we just said, the CPA designation is not all about number crunching. That's what the CPA designation is giving you, strategic thinking, not just about number crunching, but strategic thinking along as judgment. And that's never going to go away. You're always going to need CPAs taking care of those aspects of business. Well, that's, that's a really great sort of uh, explanation of the importance of the person still involved in this important profession and the um, uh, we have a question here from Marshall who reached out with the question, do I need a business degree to become a CPA? So the short answer to that is no, you don't need to have a business degree to have a CPA. We recognize that people have all sorts of various passions. So whether it's music or art or psychology, whatever it, it might be, you are still able to get your CPA designation. Um, I won't go into too, too much detail here. I'll encourage you to check out one of our info sessions, which goes into how that works. Sean? Sometimes, sometimes the students will ask me, well, does that put me at a disadvantage? Will an employer look at me differently? You do have to, you don't have to get a new degree. We accept your degree as Glow said, and you just have to take some of our foundational technical courses, but then you join everyone else in our professional education program where you do that bulk of that learning on the job and through their modules. Okay, here's another technical question, and it came in from an anonymous uh, student who asks, what's the difference between CPA, CFA, and MBA? So somebody very early on in, in their student life, I think. Glo, could you take this on? So what I can say is it's really subjective. It really depends on what your, your goal is for your career. You know, a general business uh, MBA kind of covers that. Uh, the CFA covers uh, financial planners, I believe. But the CPA designation is really what you want to be considering if you want to have that um, deep understanding of the language of business, which is the financial data. But in addition to that, having those leadership qualities to be able to be a management professional and do really well in that area as well. Um, be a finance professional in whichever area you choose, whether it's taxation or financial planning or wealth management, the CPA covers that as well. Well, we're getting near the end of our time today. And if some of our viewers missed the opportunity to ask certain questions of you, is there another way they can learn about CPA Ontario? Sean, I understand there's some events coming up. Maybe you wanna give a highlight of those? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, if you go to cpontario.ca slash events, you're going to see that we have a ton of programming for you. We've got information sessions every week. We've got things, uh, workshops on fintech and corporate social responsibility, um, you know, all kinds of emerging trends around uh, finance to give you that competitive edge, AI, blockchain, things like that, and that chance for you to meet with employers as well. Fantastic. And Glow, I understand that you have events throughout the year the students can attend to learn more. Absolutely. We also have other events that all students can attend. If you visit our website at cpaontario.ca slash event, you get to see our offering and all the other workshops, seminars that we have coming up with employers, um, speaking to different things that will really provide additional value to students who are wondering, you know, how do I get ahead? How do I make myself more employable? Some of these questions we realize students are wondering, students are asking. cpontario.ca slash events, that's where you'll find everything that's happening that we have available for students. So I would really encourage everyone watching this to definitely check it out. Well, thank you both, uh, Glow and Sean. And thank you to our students and new grads for submitting some wonderful questions for our guests. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but I wanted to turn it over to Glow and Sean to provide you an opportunity to give any final thoughts that you have for students and new grads. Sean, did you want to start this off? You know, there's no substitute. People want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And the only way to get people to know who you are is to get involved. So whether you want to be a CPA or any other career, I encourage you as a, as a professional, as a human being, you have to go out, you have to meet people, you have to volunteer, you got to learn what's out there. You don't know what you don't know. And only through building relationships are you going to get that skill set that you need and that information you need to get make an informed choice on your career. So, you know, keep at it. It's going to take work. You're going to fall down. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, have great successes. This is all part of the joy of learning and the joy of life. And, and Glow, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, first of all, for having us and giving us an opportunity to speak to uh, everyone watching this. Um, I just want to say, like Sean said, it's, you know, tough times recently, but it's going to be so worth it. I have students who sometimes ask me, they say, well, the CPA process seems really rigorous. And I say, yeah, it is. But the fact that it's rigorous is what makes it special, right? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't rigorous, then everybody would be doing it. And if everybody is doing it, then what's going to make you stand aside from everybody else? What's going to give you that competitive edge when it comes to getting that role? We really encourage you to look more deeply into it. And if you want to get in touch with Sean or I or any of the other recruiters at CP Ontario, you'll find contact information on the CP Ontario website as well. We'd we'll be more than happy to get on the on a call with you, provide you some advice, figure out, okay, where are you right now? How can we help you get to where you want to be in the future? So keep at it. Like Sean said, we wish you guys all the best and don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you'd like any more questions answered. Well, thank you, Glow and Sean. You've been so generous with your time and your excellent advice. And thank you to our audience for joining us. This video will be available on Talent Egg's YouTube channel and on our social media. Visit our website, talentegg.ca, to find out more about CPA Ontario. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Talent Egg Talks. See you next time.